They don't want that to rotate your phone? No, they did not. What you say? Okay. 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 <laughs> Woo! All right. Hallelujah. And hey, bless your name. Can you believe this? The Most High doing something this morning. The Most High is doing something this morning. The Most High is doing something serious this morning. And you better know a shift is taking place right before Passover. Still giving you a chance. To Teshuvah. He's still giving you a chance. To Teshuvah. Who Lord. Hallelujah. And bless your name. Oh, we got to rotate our phones back. To the way they were. What? These are my cycles. <laughs> and let me tell you one thing. It's constantly being built on. Constantly being built on. This is the process of sanctification. Oh, Lord. Oh, he said, wait, 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 wait till folks get back in, Jeanette. Wait, wait, wait. Who Lord? Hallelujah. And bless your name. Oh Lord, hallelujah. And bless your name. Bless your name. Minister Taylor, they ha there has been a shift, girl. In the middle of the teaching, there has been a shift. And guess what? We're going to see who's in the shift. Mm. Who's coming back in? We're going to see who's in the shift. Hallelujah and bless your name. Thank you, Most High, for showing me who's in the shift. Oh, yeah, the Most High always wants you to know what truth is. He always wants you to know what truth is. Who's in the shift? Ooh, we. First John chapter two. Ooh. If they were with you, they would continue on with you. Who we? All right now. Come on, Evelyn. Evelyn is in the shift. Gina is in the shift. Taylor, Minister Taylor is in the shift. Pastor Lucinda is in the shift. Mother is in the shift. Y'all better come on. Minister Daryl, Zenobia, Shay. Where you at, Isha? They're in the shift. Because they're holding on to the Most High's word. Mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. Thank you, Most High. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. You just good like that. You are just good like that. And you get gooder and gooder. Bless your name. Mm-mm, 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 mm-mm. Y'all start sharing the video because some people might not know it shifted. <laughs> Y'all start sharing a video with them who might not know all of a sudden a shift took place and we lost some folks. That's what happens when you cross over Hebraically. A shift takes place and you lose some people. Wow. Won't y'all share it? Uh, 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 Zenobia, won't you make a big old little, you know, status right now? Oh, uh, we are in a shift. Come on back in. <laughs> Isha, Isha is in the shift. Yeah. I'm loving this this morning. Because he will show you. Hmm. He will show you. Oh my goodness, will he show you. Hallelujah. This is the process of sanctification. This is how we are to ready ourselves to live our lives to honor the most high on earth, but it's also a part of our salvation. Allow me to explain. Salvation is obtained through our beliefs in Yeshua. Mm -hmm. However, salvation can be lost. The one saved, always saved doctrine is not scriptural. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right now, come on in here, Minister Brown. Hallelujah. Allow me to explain. Salvation is obtained through our belief in Yeshua. However, salvation...
said can be lost. That once saved, always saved doctrine is not scriptural. Losing our salvation. It is a shocking thought that we could lose our salvation. Here is a sobering passage. <laughs> Here is a sobering passage. Matthew chapter 7 verse 21 through 23. Not everyone who says to me, master, master, will enter the kingdom of heaven. But he who does the will, Torah, of my father who is in heaven will enter. Many will say to me on that day, master, master. Did we not prophesy in your name and in your name cast out demons and in your name perform many miracles? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me. You who practice lawlessness. Mm. What you say? I could lose my salvation? Yes. When you walk in lawlessness. When we read this passage in Matthew, we get the impression that this person calling out knows Yeshua. He prophesied in his name, cast out demons, and even performed miracles. Yet Yeshua said that he didn't know him and told him to depart from him. Why? Because he practiced lawlessness. Verse 21 states, that he who does the will of the father will enter and he who doesn't thus practice in lawlessness will not. We have written. We have written on 5 a.m. prayer over and over again, the cycles of Passover. But this year, in 5778, and this grace, complete, complete new beginning, it's different from us. Work out your salvation with fear and trembling. So the opposite of law abiding or obedience is lawlessness. What'd you say? Obedience is what the most high requires of us. In a humble, repentant heart, the opposite of law abiding or obedience is lawlessness. Now work out your salvation with fear and trembling. It also, for this reason, that the Apostle Paul wrote that we are to work out our salvation with fear and trembling. This fear and trembling refers to the reverence we are to have for our heavenly father. This reverence and love is what motivates us to be obedient. Ooh, most high. Philippians chapter 2, verse 12 and 13. So then, my brethren, just as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in, in my absence. Work out your salvation with fear and trembling. For it is the most high who is at work in you, both to will and to work for his good pleasure. How are we to look out of our salvation? How are we to work out our salvation? Paul gave the answer in verse 12. Just as you have always obeyed. He didn't say that you can just relax now as the laws have been done away with. It is obvious from this passage that Paul taught the Philippians to be obedient to the most high's word and that he equated this obedience to working out their salvation. There is another reference that confirms this. It is written in Hebrews that Yeshua became the source of eternal salvation to those who obeyed him. <coughs> Excuse me. 
Hebrews chapter 5, verse 9. And having been made perfect, he became to all those who obeyed him the source of eternal salvation. In the book of James, we find a whole passage explaining that faith alone is not enough. He goes so far as to say that faith without works is dead. James chapter 2 verse 26. For just as the body without the spirit is dead, so also faith without works is dead. Those works that he refers to here can be summed up by this answer. Yeshua gave when asked what the greatest commandment was. Matthew chapter 22, verse 37 through 40. And he said to him, you shall love the most high your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest foremost and foremost commandment. The second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depends the whole law and the prophets. Hmm. The whole law and prophets hang on this. All instructions the Most High gave shows either our love for the Most High or for our neighbor. Salvation has a past, present, future dimension to it. It is a process with a clearly defined starting and ending point. Here is the starting point. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 5. Even when we were dead in our transgression. Made us alive together with Messiah. By grace you have been saved. Salvation is made available to us when we believe. And this whole process of salvation continues on and will be perfected at the end. Romans chapter 5 verse 9 and 10. Much more than having now been justified by his blood. We shall be saved from the wrath of the most high through him. For while we were enemies, we were reconciled to the Most High through death of his son. Much more, having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. What we do is important. What we do is important. All this proves that it does matter how we live our lives and we will be judged according to the truth that has been revealed to us. What you say? Oh, you just got taught. It's Passover and not Easter. So you're going to be held accountable. James chapter 4 verse 17. Therefore, to one who knows the right thing to do and does not do it to him it is sin hmm. if the most high has revealed his truth to you you have a responsibility to live it every day is an opportunity to become more sanctified we are to be set apart because he is set apart First Peter chapter one, verse 14 and 17. As obedient children, do not be conformed to the former lusts, which were yours in your ignorance. But like the Holy One who called you, be holy yourselves also in all your behavior, because it is written, you shall be holy, for I am holy. If you addressed as father the one who impartially judges according to each one's work, conduct yourself in fear during the time of your stay on earth. What you say? We are not in control. The most high 
and poor choices will result in consequences. And someday it may be too late to make it better. What you say? And someday it may be too late to make it better. Let us start fresh. Ask the Most High to reveal all the leaven you have in your life and get it out. There is still time left, but we do not know what tomorrow may bring. James chapter 4, verse 13 through 15. Come now, you who say today or tomorrow, we will go to such and such a city and spend a year there and engage in business and make a profit. Yet, you do not know what your life will be like tomorrow. You are just a vapor that appears for a little while and then vanishes away. Instead, you ought to say, if the most high is real, we will live and also do this or that. May the most high bless you as you prepare your homes and your heart for his appointed times. Amen, 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 and amen. Come on, Pastor Lucinda, and tie this thing up in a bow. Hallelujah. So good. So good, so good, so good, so good, so good, so good, so good. So good. So good, so good, so good. I love how this teaching started out with we are no longer under the law. The law has been abolished. How they took that teaching and taught you, first of all, about the laws of the Most High and then brought that thing in to his appointed time. I'm talking about Amen. the rich word for Passover. Amen. And he done shifted the camera. I'm like, what the world is going on? You all shifted to the side. I'm like, okay. So we have to shift the camera again. So we shifting again. All right, amen. When he does amen. something in the natural, yes, you better believe a shift is taking place in the spirit. Amen. Amen. And I'm all right with the shift. I'm good with the shift. So I'm trying to find, I'm like, okay, because I am finding out a whole lot of things tie in with us with Passover. Yes. I never looked myself in Passover. I knew we had to... Um, Take the leaven out of the house. We have to take the leaven out of ourselves. But we really are rediscovering ourselves. We are. And I mean, you are giving some good segments of Passover. Yes. Okay, Most High, what are we going to do today? All right. Amen. So he said, you're going to discover yourself. Because if you think about when I brought you all out as 5 a.m. prayer, that was freedom. So I brought y'all out on freedom. I'm like, okay. We knew we was brought on on Passover. And I'm only speaking for myself. But I didn't look at it as freedom. I'm looking at it as, I'm so focused on you and the name Jesus. I didn't even look at, I'm out of Egypt. Right, I was just trying to find out who Jesus was. That was my focus back then. I'm like, okay, so you all are really finding out who Jesus Yeshua is. So we're going to discover ourselves this morning. According to the Hebrew lexicon, the term unleavened bread is derived from the word matzah, which means bread or cake without leaven. The lexicon also states that matzah in turn derives from a word which means to drain out or suck. I said, huh? Yeah. So if you think about the monster bread, everything is drained out and sucked out of it. So there's nothing left but what? Two ingredients, I think. You mm -hmm. better come on. So as he is draining us, because I know he's draining me. And draining me. And he's sucking out everything. What's going to be left? A shift. All right, I'm looking now. at <laughs> Okay, All right, so I said, okay, so we shifting this morning. So he's sucking out and draining everything. So the only thing that's going to be left is him. 
That's so good. I said, okay. So what is the principle of unleavened bread, 5 a.m. prayer? What's the principle? The principle of unleavened bread is instantaneous obedience. We're not playing around. We're gonna not going to have you slow folk in obedience. I mean, it's going to be instant, fast. So when the canvas shift, it shift instantaneously. Instantaneously. You was like, what's going on? Yeah. So that's where the most is that why he got us teaching on obedience? Yes, shut up. Unleavened bread, one of the principles of unleavened bread is instantaneous obedience. God, he's breaking us. Yeah, he's sucking out everything. Wow, sucking out and he's draining out everything to the only thing that's gonna be left is him. Is him. So let's go further family Come in on. covering ourselves. So we go through life constantly discovering more about the nature of life, right? And we start seeing things from different perspectives than before. We learn, we unlearn, and then we learn again. And we discover more about the things we like. Sometimes even discover something we are not looking at at the first place. Now, normally the phrase says, I ain't seen nothing in the first place, right? We say in the first place, but we're talking about at the first place. Where was the first place when he turned you around? Shut up. We're at the first place. We're not in the first place. We're at the first place. Okay. He gave us the keys of the kingdom, not the keys to the kingdom, right? Right. So I'm looking at verbiage here. So we're at the first place. So we think we just so into it because we're in our eighth year. But we're still at the first place because every year he give us something different. Right. So we're at the first place. I said, okay, Most High, let's keep going. So you discover yourself. You find out how to learn more about yourself. And it's wearing me out. It's sucking the very core of my essence right now. Me too. So you must discover yourself. You find out how to learn about yourself. So we finding out how to learn about ourselves and embrace as well as enhance our understanding. So he is really magnifying our understanding of things because I have never, I mean, we touch on Passover, Dr. J, but he is really going in depth. I mean, going with this. in. Because I want you all to have instantaneous obedience. obedience. Wow. So we're discovering more about who we are, our goals, our talents, your strengths, and your weaknesses. Because nobody want to find out about their weaknesses. Ooh. But it's coming out. Ooh. It's coming out. Amen. Hi, Amen. Travis. Hey, Travis. Amen. See how you All don't right. know who's on? Hey, Travis. Hi, Travis. Ain't that something? Okay, that's my boy. That's my boy from way back. Amen. Seeking, knocking, and asking. Set. That's what he's doing. Amen. Go. So five in your prayer. Okay. I want y'all to understand <laughs> and think about this. You will be remembered for something. Okay. It's up to you to decide what that is. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh-huh. Uh-oh. Uh-huh. I'm going to repeat that. You will be remembered for something. It's up to you to decide what that is. So we're discovering the realistic understanding of our ability. Yeah, well, let's be real this morning. So we get a fresh view, right, right, from another standing point and face the reality. So we're facing the reality right now. There are countless number of people, Dr. J, that seem to shoot too high or think they deserve more, hmm. spending most of their life wondering why they never get the opportunity that they deserve. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So guess what? We have to remember that Passover is a celebration of freedom and deliverance. What most people, again, accept as normal is something that actually is a place of bondage 
and a lack of freedom. I'm going to say that again from yesterday. So understanding why we feel the way we do about situations, we need to know what makes us tick, period. We need to know that. So in discovering ourselves and remembering that we're going to be remembered for something, you better make sure that something is what the most high wants you to be. Amen. Ooh, All right. So I'm like, okay, so we we everywhere in this teaching, and I love it. So the view of Seder, right, is order, is arrangement. And so we're supposed to be reclining in celebration and freedom right now. But we still look into the to the right of somebody else and why they got that and why they got this. But I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't want what you got like that. <laughs> Whatever the most high has for me as being under you as my leader, then I'm going to accept that and run with it. Amen. Amen. Find, out, find out what makes you tick. Find out what your blessings is. This is the opportunity to discover yourself. Amen. So say, <clears throat> say that is a ritual performed by a community. Oh, or by multiple generations of a family involving a retelling of the story of liberation of the Israelites from slavery in ancient Egypt. The story is in the book of Exodus, the Shemot. In the Hebrew Bible, the Seder itself is based on the biblical verse commanding Hebrews to retell the story of Exodus from Egypt. You shall tell your children on that day saying, it is because of what the Lord did for me when I came out of Egypt. You better say Exodus, what he did. 13 verse 8. So that is our, that's what we stand on this 5 a.m. prayer. You shall tell your children, you shall tell your family on this day, 5 a.m. prayer family, mm, saying, it is because of the Lord, what the Lord did for us as a community when we came out of Egypt. Exodus chapter 13 verse 8. So what do you notice, 5 a.m. prayer, about the Old Testament, the Tanakh, and its fulfillment in the New Testament, the Brit Hadashah? So Luke's gospel tells us what Yeshua actually thought about Passover. He did not observe it legalistically, 5 a.m. prayer. Okay. As if he was under compulsion. It was a, co a compulsion for him to do that. Right. Okay, so he says to his disciples, with desire... I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say unto you, I will not any more eat thereof until it be fulfilled mm. in the kingdom of God. Luke chapter 22, verse 15. The spirit was on that thing. I did not come to abolish the law, but mm. to fulfill. Come on. The Torah, the first five books of the Bible. It's the volume of the book. The volume. The volume. If you notice, and we can't reiterate this enough, if you notice that the New Testament is 85% of the Old Testament, it is written. So where is it written at? The Old Testament, the Tanakh. So 5 a.m. prayer, go with me, because I'm sensing some things this morning. You better Do you come You sense up. the immensity of our Father who could direct such specific fulfillment. All right, specific, specific. fulfillment. Seder, order, arrangement through the sending of his son, Yeshua Jesus. Do you feel the sense of immensity? Because I feel that this morning. Me too. So what strikes you about the roots of the faith, the steadfastness in Jesus in the Hebraic nation and history? Mm -hmm. okay. Think about the Hebraic his name is Yeshua. Yes. It allows us to call him Jesus. Okay. Wow. Because Mary wasn't going to call Jesus Jesus. She was calling him Yeshua. Yeshua. Amen. Okay. So we're going to take a moment to reflect and to thank the Most High. Thank you. For our inclusion in his plan. Shut up. Being here praying 5 a.m. prayer is to love all the teaching of God to study the entire Bible founded upon the five books of Moses. I'm going to say that again because I think again. we might were founded. Okay, let me say that again. Being Hebraic is to love all the teaching of God 
the study of the entire Bible founded upon the five books of Moses, the Torah, and to seek the guidance of the Holy Spirit to shed light on its application. There go that word again. Apply it. Apply it. In all aspects of our life. And to help others to do the same. Though this is the word and the spirit in balance. I said, okay. The word so is here spirit I go. in balance. And spirit in balance. The entire Bible, as Minister Tila said, the volume of the book. Amen. Mm -hmm. We're getting some balance on discovering ourselves this morning. So I'm going to practice my Hebrew, okay? Go ahead. Baruch Atah Adonai, Eloheinu Melek Halam, Hamazah Lekam Mint Haras. English translation. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who brings forth bread from the earth. You better now, go you, ahead. You know his bread is unleavened, right? So he brings forth bread from the earth. Oh, come on, Holy Spirit. We're going somewhere this morning. Oh, Lord. Okay. So we are led by the Spirit of God, and I can feel, I can feel the scent. I, I feel it. Okay. So if I get all out of whack, uh, excuse me here. Because I'm like, okay. I said, I'm going to practice this Hebrew. Amen. Amen. We are led by the Spirit of God by abiding in the inner witness. So what is your inner witness this morning, 5 a.m. prayer? Mm. Intuition. So let me say that again. We are led by the Spirit of God by abiding in the inner witness, the intuition that comes from the Holy Spirit. When your heart is right, God will train you how to tell the difference between what's of him and what's not. I'm going to say that again. When your heart is right. It. When you are led by the Holy Spirit of God, by abiding in the inner witness, intuition that comes from the Holy Spirit. Right. When your heart is right, God will train you on, God will train you how to tell the difference between what's of him and what's not. Right. When you have become so dependent on the Spirit of the Lord, 5 a.m. prayer, that we move when he moves and we stop when he stops. Shut up. Have he stopped yet? Amen. Mm -hmm. So God desires to communicate with his children. Emphasize the tongue of fire God gave. The way God uses dreams in people's lives. Okay. Not to mention the quickening of his word in your hearts and the minds as we immerse ourselves in it. Oh, yeah. We talking about the tongue of fire. Did uh -huh. you say how he used dreams in people's lives? Yes. I in people's lives, not to mention the quickening of his word. Now with you, he don't come to you in dreams. He come to you as Moses. He never came to Moses in a dream. Ever. Talk face to face. Face to face. So when you down there, you don't slid down the wall in your closet. I know the most high is talking to you. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. <laughs> and he and, and most people he uses dreams, but with you, I know he don't use dreams. And not to mention the quickening of his word. So everything is fast. Okay? He's quickening. Instantaneous. Get your heart right. Yes. Immerse your minds in his word. Yes. So the question is, 5 a.m. prayer, and we got a lot of questions this morning. Are we listening and have we trained our senses to discern the voice of the Holy Spirit? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So... 5 a.m. prayer. Evaluate where you are on the subject of hearing the most high. And write down some specific things you can do to further train yourself in this area. Okay. Uh, come on, Holy Spirit. Are there some things you sense God is saying to you about areas of your life? Mm -hmm. Shema Israel. Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Akkad. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. As you say, blessed be the name of the Holy One. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4 through 9. Good teaching. So in closing, what? 5 a.m. prayer. <laughs> That's it. Peace. 
peace is the foundation of authority. Oh, I got some more. You want me to keep going? Come on. Stop it. So this, morning, this morning, we could commit to some principles and some values. You want to commit yes. to some principles? And yes. This morning? Well, let's go. So, Dr. J, since you want to commit to some principles and values, what matters most to you? Huh? What matters most to you? The most mm -hmm. high. Okay, so here we go again. The principle of unleavened bread, instantaneous obedience. So we're trying to establish a righteousness, a right standing of our, of, if you don't, I'm going to put it this way. If you don't try to establish a right standing with the most high, you can pollute your own walk with him. Oh, come on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can keep going this morning. Come on. Each individual, each individual has their own thoughts, right? Their own minds and their own behaviors. Right. Every person also has their own core values. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Core values are the values 5 a.m. prayer and the principles that are the core of our deepest desires. Is God principles leading you? Is God's principles your core values? Oh, come on. Mm -hmm. So we mistake ourselves by creating our own beliefs. Shut up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We do that. So many self-defined spiritual people, Dr. J, they can talk to you at length for hours about spiritual beliefs of others. Hmm. Mm -hmm. They can do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But when it comes to their own beliefs, mm. there aren't actually any. Mm. Yeah. Discovering yourself this morning. Mm. Mm -hmm. So core values represent our motivations, our inspirations, okay. and our impulses. Okay. These personal values are driving the driving force for how we find contentment. Are you content? As Paul was. Are you content right now? No. Nah. Because I, I see myself doing this complaining like how long? But yet, for some reason, most people stray from their own core values. Mm. <laughs> you better say it. And you trying to, you trying to not give it to us? Are you kidding me? Most high is something else. So, they blindly put their faith, their steadfastness, in aspects of their life that are not their true motivators. And as a result, they are unable to achieve their dreams and their visions. Mm. So you can't even achieve your own dreams and visions. How are you going to achieve the most highest vision? Woo, you better say that. Mm. You won't even by your own core values, which I'm sure I, my own core values is jacked up. I can't even stay by the jacked upness. She okay. Mm -hmm. Come on. <laughs> so, do you want a greater freedom this morning? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, during your spiritual awakening, because we are being awakening, awakened spiritually, so stay woke. One day, wake up, right? Yes. Look around. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And suddenly feel shackled by your home mm -hmm. and possibly even your relationship. Mm. Yeah, because you're in a spiritual awakening now. Mm -hmm. But think about the things in your life, 5 a.m. prayer, that weigh you down and deny you freedom. Mm. Wow. Think about how life would be without it and what you might be able to do without it. Because mm. I know I can't, I can't live without the Most High. So can you really think about being without him? being without his core values, being without his principles. No. Shema Israel. Mm. So there are many different theories, 5 a.m. prayer, about why most people refuse to discover and examine their own essential core values. The most often cited reasons include complacency, mm. mm -hmm. self-reflection, -reflect involves the willingness to commit to discovering those true motivators or essential core values and then changing because of them. Right. So if you got if you got the most high true true core values and his principles 
You can't do nothing but change. Right. Hmm. You think. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's right, Dr. J. <laughs> you looking like Pastor Lucinda. Yeah. Okay, Dr. J. So many people have grown comfortable with their cynicism in life and are unwilling to make the effort to discover what the core values truly are. Hmm. Uh-huh. Yeah. Hmm. Mm -hmm. They keep their life in mediocrity and free of abundance just by not wanting to change. Because hmm. see, so you can mask all day long, but the most high know. And I keep telling people the same God that you serve, the most high God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is the same one I serve. So while you over there masking, guess what? He's unmasked. Amen. Thank you. Amen. So we often react to life situations instead of proactively choosing to discover ourselves. I'm going to say that again. We often react to life situations instead of proactively changing or choosing to change and discover ourselves. Good. So Passover is a celebration of freedom and deliverance. Mm. What is wrong? The next thing is fear. Self-reflection on our core values can be a frightening process because we don't want to look at ourselves. We I don't. know I don't. We don't. And we it's don't. fear. We don't. It involves examining yourself to discover the answers to God's questions right. about who you are and what your personal values and principles are. Right. What are your personal values and principles? Shema Israel. Here, here listen, listen and obey. And obey. That self-reflection, ooh, that self-reflection, mm. that mirror uncovers all that mess, all your principles, all your values. Right. So you are forced to take responsibility for your own behavior. Uh-oh. -uh. You're forced. You're forced. Then we got some doubt, right? Doubt creeps in. Mm. Yes. The cynicism that has taken over our life may have led to doubt in our own abilities. Think about your life. Think about your life up until now. Right, right. Personal values or core values. For your principles and values to be truly unlocked, you would need to have faith, steadfastness in the most high. Right. And what you accomplish through him. Right. This will allow for self-reflection and the true unlocking of the core values of your life. I said, okay, most high. All right. So who influences you, Dr. J? Who influences you? Mm. Bobby and prayer, who influences you? Other people influence you. Exactly. Thank you for influencing me. This can be parents. This can be siblings. This can be friends. This can be your society. All right. People influence us either intentionally or unintentionally. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this is where our excuses come in. <laughs> so many people have excuses, excuses, objections, and an apathy toward discovering their essential core values, right, and their principles. But they ain't really trying to discover that. Because hmm. I know one thing, I don't want to discover no more. I'm just going to be true. Let me just be transparent. <laughs> I'm tired. <laughs> when you start... When he start discovering you, it's like, like I keep saying, I'm the nicest person ever. I will give you anything. The most I say, yeah, you will. But say something stupid to you. Hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <sighs> I got a heart condition. <laughs> I got a heart condition. Hi, right, Chiquita Sanders. Amen. So we're discovering ourselves this morning, girl. I know, that's right. Amen. Hey, Chiquita. So what should we realize, Dr. J? <laughs> what you should realize is that when you refuse to take the time to do some self-reflection on your core values, you are the one that is putting the roadblock between yourself and your laser focus. You know, when you're on a laser, mm -hmm. that, that beam is straight straight ahead, right? Right. It is really red laser right. light. It got you. Right. So the most high this morning, the most high God 
got that laser focus on you. What you going to focus on this morning? Wow. Amen. Wow. Yeah. So in closing. Okay. You are the one that is holding yourself back. Mm. If you allow yourself to engage in self-reflection, you will find that your core values and your principles through the most high are, the, are right there for you to discover. This has a dramatic change on your life. I said, okay, most high, let's do this. So Father in prayer, Finding, recognizing, and utilizing the most highest principles and his core values are the potential to give you a laser focus on your path. Amen, amen, and amen. Mm -hmm. <sighs> you know, I bought my mind oh last my. night, child. I, I think I should start eating it today. <laughs> it is amazing. He's prepping Yes, he is. He's it has prepping. lit up for me. Yes. It has lit up. Me too. It it's was not like this help. the first year, the second year. No. The third year. This eighth year is crazy. New beginning. Yes. I'm like discovering myself. <laughs> I'm just trying to discover who Jesus is. <laughs> I'm like rediscovering myself. I'm just trying to get the flower out the cup. <laughs> My focus is wrong. It should be on rediscovering myself and try to get the biscuits out the refrigerator. Right. I'm sitting up here trying to figure out, and I'm transparent as you are, what alcohol don't got yeast in it. Because <laughs> we got to remember, now I read, in scripture, that when they when they did the Passover, they had four cups of wine. Oh Lord! Mm. Boom! They supposed to. They did that. They supposed to. <laughs> but when you start the feast of unleavened bread, no yes. yes. So the Hebrew right. God, I am, and Google is your friend. Right. You know, one of my assistants Googled. Ooh, oh, Dr. J, uh, that Chopin. That vodka right there is a potato vodka, so ain't no yeast in it. What? <laughs> you know, it gets down to the ingredient. Exactly. <laughs> We're thinking about the wrong things. We need to rediscover yes. ourselves. I'm trying to think, yes. about, what can I drink? What can I eat? What can I? And the most high like, how can you get bitterness out? How can you remove <laughs> jealousy? How can you get exactly. How can you get closer to me? I can't have you coming Stop. to me leaven. You got to be unleavened. You can't even come to the altar. They couldn't put leaven bread on the altar. Amen. They could not. By the time so Saturday comes, comes, well, Friday. What's your core? I'm Dr. Go. J. Huh? What's your principles? We are rediscovering ourselves, not rediscovering something new about oh how we gonna how we gonna celebrate Passover. Okay. It's the rediscovering ourselves. Look at the ingredients in your heart. What's in your heart? Get that out first. Love, Look that out. Joy, Ain't that out? Long suffering, self control. I got the fruits of the spirit in my heart. Yeah, right. <laughs> Most high. Like Amen. You. you better get there by uh, Friday, cause March the That's what I'm saying. April seventh. You better be right. That's why he giving us a week, because we just right on target, right? I'm still trying to become a leader, OK? That's my focus. <laughs> she like, when are we going to get back to the book, becoming a leader? He like, I done shifted all that, turned it upside down, turned this back up this way. You done shifted. Because how you going to be a leader, and you can't even discover your own core values? You don't even know what your own principles are. What do you stand on? <laughs> wow. <sighs> you can't even be obedient. I want instantaneous obedience. Today, Egypt, it was so fast, they couldn't even put leaven in the bread. So how fast is your obedience? Wow. How fast can you be obedient, Dr. J? Because they was fast 
It was so fast, they couldn't even put leaven in their bread. Nope, they had to go. They had, they had to, to go. go too. It's a sense of urgency we, right now. If we don't is. realize it, it's a sense of urgency. And the most high let really us is. know things done got really serious and it is urgent. So I Amen. need leaders mm -hmm. that can get the leaven out. I need leaders that have character. I need leaders that yes. know that 85% of leadership is your attitude and you keep having yes. an attitude. I need leaders. Amen. I'm going to suck and some stuff out of you. I'm going to drain you. Yes. If I can't suck, I'm going to drain it out of you. Yes. When you drain and stuff, like, you know, when you sifting right. things, like the oil, you're trying to separate the oil from hamburger. You see all that drip, 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 and it come out real fast, right? And then you get that last ending of it, drip, drip, drip. And now you shaking it, the hamburger meat, and you shaking it, and it's still... That oil is still leaving, right? And you have to, and you leaving some to, in the skillet. You leaving just a little bit, not with Passover, not even a little bit, to make it taste good. Mm -mm. You got to drain all no that stuff out. Whew. No ingredient. Clean your house and clean your spiritual house. <sighs> Damn, he is not gonna let us off this wheel. <laughs> no, he's not. Remember, he's the wheel inside the wheel. Yes. Amen. That's a double portion. Yes. We, we, you he gonna, ain't going you nowhere. You're going to get this right. You're going to get this You're going to get it right. You're going to get, right. get it right. And that's what I love about God. <clears throat> You're going to get this right. You're going to get it right. Period. You're going to get it right. You know how you have sentences with those uh, punctuations. You got the period. You got the exclamation point. You got the uh, question mark. You got the comma because a comma is a period and you're pausing. We didn't know that the semicolon is a period and a comma. That's double pausing. He wants to double pause. He got a semicolon behind us. We're going to double pause for a moment. Mm -hmm. Y'all going to get this right. Mm -hmm. we That's what a semicolon is. Double a period pause. and a comma. So when you got a period, that's the end of it, right? And when you got a comma, you pausing. So we going to Stop for a moment because that's a period, and then we're gonna pause. Oh my god, hmm. pay attention! Wow, Israel, I can see that for real. That's mm -hmm. good. Right. We had a semicolon. <laughs> good, that's all I got. We had a semicolon. Yeah, we stop and we're gonna a moment. Yes, ma'am. Because we don't ask the question, right? We got the question. We had the question mark going. Right. We asked some questions, right? Right. And then when he got this obedience, he had that period there. Stop. Mm -hmm. But now, because y'all in y'all eighth year, it's a new beginning. So I'm going to put a period and a comma. We're going to stop for a moment. We're going to stop with becoming a leader. We're going to stop that. And we're going to pause. And y'all going to learn some Passover. Mm, okay, most high. That's like those landmarkers, you know, the Israel, they knew when to move and when to be still. They knew it. Yes. Yes. They wasn't just wandering through the wilderness. They was given an instruction. <laughs> okay, move now. Mm -hmm. Okay, stop. Oh, okay. And then they was right. Amen. to the instruction. Yes, they was. Wow. They was. I'm like, okay, Mosai. Woo. And um, speaking of wilderness, 5 a.m. prayer, don't waste your wilderness. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. Nothing in your life that you ever go through will be a waste. Hmm. Oh, you know, I got some, I got some notes. We want to go there? Everything you say, I'm listening to. Wow. Okay? Wilderness seasons in our life are appointed by God the Most High. Don't waste your wilderness, exclamation point. Hmm. Hello. Mm -hmm. wow. So what is the principle, Dr. J, in wilderness? Flexibility. You exclamation know point. <laughs> I'm just, you keep saying stuff, I'll pull stuff up. Amen. Because the fact is, after we pass over, we're going into the wilderness now. Don't waste it. Amen.
exclamation point. Wait for the most high to lead you and move you. Like you was talking about the landmarkers. They weren't just wandering around aimlessly. They had landmarkers. Yes. So you're going to walk when he walk. You're going to move when he move. You're going to stop when he stop. Or you're just going to keep going with your own core values and your own principles. Hmm. And that's why we keep going through. Because we ain't learned nothing. Hmm. We ain't learned nothing. You know you're right. Look at this one. Don't waste your wilderness by taking matters in your own hands, 5 a.m. prayer. Hmm. Do what the Spirit is leading you to do. Mm -hmm. Learn how to move and stay at the command of the Most High. Okay. What is he commanding you today? Shema Israel, listen. So, to move through your wilderness, you need to be sensitive to the Spirit of God like the children of Israel was. Hmm. Uh-huh. As you walk through your wilderness, experience faithfully. Now, you're going to experience some things faithfully, steadfastly, okay? We are building up treasures. Mm. Amen. Yes. So, treasure box today, 5 a.m. prayer. Your own core values, your own principles, your own way of doing things. Mm hmm Wow. Guess what, Dr. J.? And I'm going to end with this one. You keep talking, I'm going to pull up something else. Okay, I'm going to end with this one. Going through wilderness experience in, your, in our life is a part of the salvation. It's the part of the lifestyle process. Mm. What is the lifestyle process? Wow. For all, God's teaching and instructions is where the creator speaks, mother. Wow. And then you have the witnesses. Through the books, the prophets. prophets. Come on, Shay. <laughs> wow. Yes, it's a lifestyle. This is we make deep. it so complicated, but it, like I always say, it's so simple. We're gonna miss it. Exactly. You always say that. You're gonna miss it. The Torah, the five books of the Bible, is nothing but Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus. Numbers and Deuteronomy. That's it. We have to go through the volume of the book. Amen. We just can't be New Testament people or believers. That's it. That is. I'm it. just saying. That's it. I'm just saying. Rip out that middle part that separates, because it's the volume of the book that we the have to read. Book. The entire book. That's real, that's real talk. Yes. Now, what I didn't understand when I was in um, the setting of the church, what I did not understand is that if the law, if the five books of the Bible were abolished or done away with, why would we still have sermons in it? I never understood that. <laughs> why are we referencing? Why are we talking about poor? Huh? Why are we talking about AI? Why are we talking about them places? Why are we talking about those people? Why are we talking about Aaron? Why, if it's abolished? Hmm. Think about, he wants you to think today. Take that semicolon, stop, and pause for a moment. <clears throat> That's good. The volume of the book. That's good. The volume of the book. The volume of the book. Wow. I understand. Wow. So if I'm crazy, I'll be crazy for the most high. Me too. If I have turned, then I'm a turn for the most high. Exactly. I'm a turn for God. Exactly. I'm going to turn. This Passover is going. just going to be amazing. It's going to be awesome. Getting the bread, getting the leaven yes. out of our homes and our spiritual houses. I'm looking forward to Passover. I am in the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Because it's something about now his we really appointment. Understand. It's our appointment. It's five in your prayer. It's our appointment. That's my appointment. It's our appointed time. Yes. 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 Oh my goodness. Yes. He's all. Huh. All right. All right. <laughs> so good. You did an awesome job. Awesome. Mm -hmm. I'm so the glad most we high so much awesome time. That. We be having yes. so much time together. I love it. He's okay. good like that. Yes, he is. As stipulated in the Torah, Rob, the core named the priest. We have a special duty to raise our hands and bless the people. 
And the Most High God promises that he will place his name on our hands and bless them. He said, wherever I cause my name to be honored, I will come to you and bless you. And so is with hands lifted and I pray, 5 a.m. prayer. The Most High will kneel before you presenting gifts and guard you with the hedge of protection. The Most High God will illuminate the wholeness of his being towards you, bringing order, and he will beautify you. The Most High will lift up his wholeness of being and look upon you, and he will set in place all you need to be whole and complete. So they shall put my name, the Most High God, on the children of Israel, and I will bless them. Amen. Amen. So good. March 30th through April 7th, Passover, and then the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Ooh, Lord. We are ready. Are getting ready. Amen. I say we're ready. I, I told my sister last night, now look, now you be causing a rise in me, Isha. So uh, <laughs> I'm going to have to disconnect from you. Because <laughs> I'm trying not to be, you know, trying not to be puffed up. Right. I'm right. trying not to be puffed up and all that kind of stuff. So right. I'm just like, man, <laughs> you can't talk to some people right now because they cause a rise. You cannot. Time to get the You cannot. Out. You got that right, brother. Boca to you. All too. right. Boca That's what I'm talking about. It's time to get okay. out. Yes, Lord. Whew. He going to drain it. He going to suck it out. So yes. we might as well just get ready for it. Yes. And yes. it's. And it's better. I mean, me and, me and Minister Tita was talking the other day. She said, I'm just going to shut up. And I'm with her. I'm just going to shut up. Right. You know, we did, we did plenty of teachers of taking the emotions out of things. And like your sister, she blessed me. That year blessed me when she said, you all got to learn to take some emotions out of some things. Exactly. You don't have to be hardcore. Exactly. But you won't get that rise if you take your emotions out of certain things, Dr. J. You exactly. know you can't sing. Accept exactly. it. It's okay. Yeah. We love okay. you. Wait. Wait a minute. I'm just saying. Like, just saying amen and witnesses. You, I didn't even catch you was talking about I couldn't sign. I'm like, yeah. Yeah, girl. Yeah. And then all of a sudden I heard, you can't sign. That's why I said you got to listen. Shema Israel. <laughs> but that we was love a your great spirit. Example. Like you told me. Like you told me. He loves your spirit, Pastor Lucinda, because you can't sing either. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah. That was a great example. Yes, it was. Most high. The truth that now. set you free. Yeah. Don't stop singing. Never, ever, ever. Because it's your spirit. You got that right. You be, and one thing about you, you know the words. Now, that's a good thing. Now, if you couldn't sing and didn't know the words, that would be a problem. Okay? But you know the words. Whatever. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Come on, Zenobia, and take us out with some praise. Love you, love you, love you. Bye now. Love you more. Oh, I love you, Pastor Lucinda. I love you, girl. I love you, Dr. J. <laughs> All right. Bye now. Keep out the same, family. Bye now. There's a cloud. It's hovering over the place. Oh, my God. This place. And it's the way. Shit. Yes. Glory. Glory. It's the VR. Let's be.
Bye now. So good.